before the midterm we have uh, let's have a small recap of the course so first we studied about the introduction to fem and then we spoke about method of weighted residuals and then we talked about 1d bar and its formulation then we also talked about element library we also talked about 2d and 3d elements in that and then while well, while doing 1d bar we also further what we did we talked about the strong form and then we studied the weak form and then we used finite element approximations numerical approximations to develop 1d formulations for the to derive shape functions and other things we have done it and then using these things we also studied how to analyze stresses of stresses in 2d frame or 2d frames then we started recently on the analysis of beams this is the this is the topic we were continuing in the previous class so what we will do we will continue from the same place where we left so let me have a short recap uh, flash of previous lecture So we developed, we, we were studying the, from the lecture 14, the analysis of beams. We started with euler Bernoulli beam. We derived its strong form. Then we used method of weighted residual and converted into the weak form. Once we converted into the weak form, we also identified what is our uh, natural boundary conditions, kinematic boundary conditions, and others. And then at this place, somehow, uh, I haven't derived it. I will show you that from this we want to convert into a um, set of linear uh, algebraic equation that is KD is equals to F form and for that we need to choose our virtual displacement in a manner that it belongs to V should belongs to H to 0 and that is where uh, we started our finite element formulation. So for, for once what we did was we selected only one element with two noded um, two nodes on the bar element and for a bar element we have four degrees of freedom that is theta displacements uh, are the two degrees of freedom per each node and hence we have four degrees of freedom unlike the the kind of a bar formulation and then we derived a simple equation uh, solution for the based on the governing differential equation we solved the general solution and based on this general solution we connected uh, we kind of derived our shape functions using comparing the coefficients and we also studied about the properties of the shape functions how these shape functions are related to one another so and then uh, that that is the place where we kind of uh, uh, where uh, once once the, uh, once we have derived the shape functions uh, using the physical significance of um, of deriving the stiffness matrix that is we give only one degree of freedom keeping all other degrees of freedom uh, constant or uh, all other degrees of freedom zero 
the forces that keeps the uh, the member under equilibrium would be the corresponding column vector in the stiffness matrix that's what we have derived or we have showed in the previous class and based on that we showed that k comes out to be this thing so for brevity what i will do i'll try to since it's been a long time uh, almost like two weeks back i'll try to repeat most of the lecture 15th and then quickly uh, i will go to the uh, actual part of solving certain beam problems So before that, I would like to uh, again uh, make an announcement that uh, I would like to to uh, shift my Friday's class to either morning morning or to if possible tomorrow. For that, I'll send a uh, send a uh, request to the administrator. So that that. That is one thing I want to do it because at the same hour I have another uh, meeting which I cannot, I could not able to reschedule it because some of the visitors are coming at the same time uh, during the class hours. So for that, what we'll do, we'll try to negotiate for a time which is convenient for the uh, all the student and me either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So the regular Friday class at two o'clock may not be uh, be held at the same time. So anyway, let's get back to the uh, problem. So we start with Euler Bernoulli beam. In the Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Um, one can show that 1 over rho is equals to is approximated to d square y by dx square is equals to m by ei. This is the first thing that we derived from the Euler Bernoulli beam assumptions that is plane structures remains plane and per perpendicular even after the deformations and the segment under uh, the beam segment undergoes deformation as a arc of a circle so based on that the radius of curvature of that uh, circle would be the row so and it is can be approximated as with respect to deflection as d square y by dx square and hence that can be equated to m by ei which we have derived lastly so i will not uh, continue the, uh, i will not derive it now i will just also show that dm by dx is equals to v of x and dv by dx is equals to minus w of x for a given uh, beam with let's say if you have a beam with some bound conditions and some w loading and Using the equilibrium, using this general uh, free body diagram, we derived this equilibrium equations. Together, we can show that by combining the equation one, equation two, and equation three, one can show that d by dx d by dx is equals to v and if you do d square by dx2 this will become and this will become dv by dx so that is d square by dx square ei 
d square y by dx square is equals to minus w of x and if e or the beam if the beam is homogeneous that is e is constant and cross section of beam doesn't change that is prismatic cross section prismatic beam that is i is constant in those cases we can write ei d4 is equals to minus w of x so this is the governing differential equation governing differential equation for the beam also known as the, the strong form of the beam equation okay now we know that in order to solve through finite element we cannot go with the strong form we need a weak form so for that what we do is we use method of weighted residual that is weight times residue zero so we use such property so here my w i choose it to be v is my weight and residue is defined as if my solution is y is exact solution then i can write my y is equals to y tilde plus an error so this y tilde is an approximation so r is nothing but ei d4 y tilde plus w of x if it is y the residue would be zero if if i substitute my approximation then my residue will not turn to zero so in, the, in that length zero to l v r dx implies equals to zero implies zero to l v ei d4 now i will try to expand this integral when i try to expand this integral this is my first term the first term would become integration by part the integration by part parts are integral u dv is equals to u v evaluated at minus integral v du so i make use of such thing on this so or vice versa you can have it in the thing so i can write this one as the first term as integral 0 to l minus dv by dx ei
d cube Now further, I take the first term of this and then again apply integration by parts, then this would become d square v by dx2 ei d square y by dx2. Anyway, these are approximations. These are not exact. Here I don't have to write, there is no difference between exact and that at the boundary because they have to agree dx minus of d square y by dx2 0 to L with the minus of symbol there and this term if I write it here this will be zero to L and I bring back my second term from this and write it that is equals to zero. So this is the quite an important thing and this one is our weak form. I can further write this quantity as m. m. And this quantity is dm by dx. If it is this quantity, this would dm by dx would become shear force capital V. So this is bending moment. dv by dx can be written as theta if necessary. So now, but I will not write it as theta yet, but it is of the form of theta. dy by dx would be the theta. So now, if you look at it, this virtual displacement should have certain characteristics. First thing is V has to be continuous, dv by dx has to be continuous, d square v by dx square has to be continuous, okay, because here d square v, this is also continuous, in the initial those has to be continuous and they are also has to be integrable, that is a function f of dx within the limits, whatever is the limits, it has to be defined, not undefined. So that means with the since these integrals has d square v, this is some function of x involving this. So what we have to say is it has to be h0. It should belong to h if dv by dx. In this case, this integral has to be defined. It is not indefinite. So, I mean infinite in nature. So, that's the reason this cannot go to infinity, shoot out to infinity. It has to be finite. So, it has to be h1 and this has to be, this should not go to infinity. So, that's the reason it has to be also integrable. So, h2. Further, we know that whenever so before telling that I need to re-emphasize that these parentheses whatever is there within this parenthesis these things 
only these two are called boundary terms so in the boundary terms that is the terms which are in this form okay the boundary terms are the terms which are of defined in this this manner in this you can see that either these in these boundary terms obviously you have inbuilt natural boundary conditions how it is and how it is is by this so whenever you mention at so we have to define what is natural boundary conditions and kinematic boundary conditions so for the beam if you mention y and dy by dx these comes under kinematic boundary conditions and if you mention d square y by dx2 and d cube y by dx3 in combination of, the, of that it will be so if i put it as ei this will become m if i multiply ei this will become v if i mention sorry if this becomes shear force bending moment this is slope this is transverse displacement so so i don't have problem when i'm mentioning my shear force and bending moment because they are they're already present in it but in case if i mention natural boundary conditions when i mention the natural boundary conditions i don't know at those places what my virtual variable has to be there this boundary terms will be standing out and we don't know what is the purpose of it for that cases what we seek is wherever kinematic boundary conditions are mentioned our v if the, let me write it if kbc is mentioned if it is a displacement type then v has to be equals to zero that is if y is equals to some delta then v has to be equals to zero if dy by dx is equals to some alpha then dv by dx has to be equals to zero this if by doing that whatever happens is when we are substituting in kinematic boundary conditions the boundary term would vanish and only we are left out with the natural boundary conditions that is the essential to for us to write it because otherwise we don't know how to deal with the boundary terms coming from the natural boundary conditions too so to make it vanish this is the additional criteria that this brings this additional criteria we call it as h20 so whenever it has to satisfy these things we call it as the corresponding virtual displacement has to vanish whenever the corresponding natural boundary condition variable has been specified it can be non zero still this value has to be zero so that it's 20 hilbert space 2 with homogeneous values at the uh, at the boundary uh, boundaries where the corresponding kinematic variables are mentioned in whatever manner but there are only selected choice of things and those choice are the things that belongs to the set or a category which are lies within the so with that now this weak form is in a valid form that means we have preserved all the whatever is the characteristics that are present mostly in the uh in the strong form so that if we seek for a solution it will not kind of make it ill posed or ill defined so to do that we have to choose our virtual displacement in such a manner so now we not only developed our weak form
we not only developed our weak form and we know that how the v the choice of v is even though we don't know exactly what is v at this given point of time but we know that what are the requirements over the v in these uh, weak form solution of the weak form of the beam so with this now what we will do is we will try to develop a two noded beam element so So we want to physically understand what are the entries of the K matrix for a beam. So for that, what I do is I consider a simple two noded beam element. For a two noded beam element, So this is node i, this is node j and this is some element e or an element e which is connected by the node i and node j. Let us see the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are the displacement in the y direction because let me consider this is x and this is y direction displacement of the node in the y direction I will simply call it as di by dropping let uh, okay so further what I will do I will call dy as simply just I will drop y because it is redundant and then I have theta i. Similarly, I have dj and theta j. This is degree of freedom 1, 2, 3 and 4. There are 4 degrees of freedom. Now, let us consider there are no since this beam doesn't have any uh, distributed load I can simply write my governing equation in this case my approximation and y would be the same so that's the reason I'm directly writing as y instead of y tilde now what I will do is I will try to integrate it so when I try to integrate it I will end up with uh, I'll do the I'll write the complete form so EI uh, 1 by EI we will get such a kind of things now what are the boundary conditions for these things so that I can fully determine I don't know what is A0, A1, A2, A3. So what are these things? How to determine? To determine this what I will do is I will try to use boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions for this guy is at x is equals to 0 that is at node i my 
di is equals to sorry my y is equals to di and my theta is equals to theta i similarly at or i will rewrite it as my dy by dx at node i is equals to theta i these are the two boundary conditions i need four boundary conditions to determine the four unknown co coefficients so i will use at x is equals to length of the beam that is at node j my y is equals to dj and dy by dx is equals to theta j so based on this four things and my y i will not derive it i have already dealt with in the previous class i will directly give you the final form of my displacement transverse displacement which can be written as y of x is equals to after determining uh, we can write it this one as 2 by l cube di minus dj plus 1 by l square, l square theta i minus theta j into x cube plus minus 3 by l square d1 di minus dj minus 1 by l 2 theta i minus theta j into x square plus theta i x plus di so this is my functional form so what now i will do is i want to rewrite my y as even though this polynomial form is there i want to write this one as n1 n1 di plus plus n3 dj plus n4 theta j so or in the local degrees of freedom i want to write it as n1 t1 plus n2 d2 plus n3 d3 plus n4 so or that means i have defined my d vector as d1 d2 d3 d4 as a column vector which is nothing but di theta i dj theta j the d1 is di d3 is dj d2 is theta i d4 is theta j so that means i can rewrite this one as n vector times d vector where n vector is a row vector consisting of n1 n2 n3 and n4 all are functions of x so when i rewrite this above expression this above expression star in terms of this i can separate my n's which are nothing but my shape functions
So let me summarize it by rewriting it. I, will, I have derived it last time, so I will not go over the derivation. So n of x would be something looks like this. 1 over L cube of 2x cube minus 3x square L plus L cube n2 of x is equals to 1 over L square of x cube minus 2L x square plus x L square and n3 of x is equals to 1 by L cube of minus 2x cube plus 3x square L and n4 of x is equals to 1 over L square into x cube minus L x square is the thing. So this is the corresponding shape functions for the all the four of the things. Okay. Now we need to do something is we have to verify how does this shape functions behave. We know that what are the shape functions? Shape functions means when we give d1 is equals to 1 and d2 0, d3 0, d4 0, how does each of the uh, forces would be scaled? So that is what is our kind of the shape function gives. So for that to enforce it we need to also understand something like properties of the shape functions as discussed previously this so called obtained approximation or the solution y of x in this given case should have uh, should have completeness. The completeness so completeness means it should represent a rigid body it should capture rigid body displacement and it should also carry rigid body it should also should have rigid body rotations so if we don't do this then the error terms would have such kind of things so it is preferable that it should have these things so in order to have such kind of things to capture rigid body displacements and rigid body rotations it should satisfy this property dn1 by dx plus dn3 dx is equals to 1 Further, it should also satisfy these are the properties, unlike our and these are the properties of and the, the so called shape functions that are obtained which has such these properties over and above that n of i um, so this is little bit I will rewrite it because this is a hermite shape function so I have to so n1 at x1 is equals to 
1 n2 x1 0 n3 x2 sorry x sorry about that it is still x1 is 0 n4 x1 is 0 similarly dn by dx n1 is equals to 0 dn1 dx sorry this is n2 dx x1 is equals to 1 dn3 dx x1 is equals to 0 dn4 dx x1 is equals to 0 similarly at the other thing n1 evaluated at x2 is 0 n2 n3 evaluated x2 is 1 and dn sorry this is not n4 evaluated at x2 is equals to 0 so the, where x1 represents x1 is equals to 0 so this is the node 1 node 2 so or i call it as i and j sometimes so this is that zero length x is measured from this side so this is one is zero and l is the length of the node uh, of the element similarly n1 dx x2 is equals to zero dn2 dx zero dn3 dx x2 0 dn4 dx evaluated x2 is 1 so if you look at it so you can clearly see that node 1 when only d1 all the other things are automatically uh, all the other things are automatically kind of shuttered off uh, at that corresponding things similarly when I am giving only this is corresponding to D1 this is corresponding to D2 this is corresponding to D3 this is corresponding to D4 so where D1 is nothing but D1 Di this is theta i dj theta j so that is what so that should have these things and the shape functions which satisfies these set of properties are called hermite shape functions so such a shape functions which satisfy these criteria are called So this brings so th this is how the shape functions of the bar are quite different from that of a uh, beam. The this is for the beam. Beam are hermite shape functions, whereas bar are called Lagrange shape functions. So now, let us go back uh, to the expressions what we are using. So, what we will do is, let's again get back and we will write our, uh, um, since we have determined our y, uh, the fun our uh, y of x, we will try to evaluate So, 
to get the physical interpretation of our um, uh, of our uh, k matrix to do that what we will do is let us take something like this so let us evaluate um, for a given so since we have uh, our degrees of freedom are like di theta i dj theta j the corresponding force conjugates are this one is shear force which we call it as let's call it as fi and this one as mi and this one as fj and mj so theta i mi are one force conjugate di fi are another set so for every displacement or for every degree of freedom there is a force conjugate the product of which will give form of energy so stored energy so that's the reason these are its conjugates so now what we do is we have already expression for y of x which we have solved it little bit earlier we have given it to you so Now we know that based on our equation 2 and equation 3 we can write m of x or and v of x is equals to since we already have this expression let's try to evaluate these bending moment and shear forces once we get that we'll try to substitute x is equals to 0 and get fi mi and x is equals to l and get fj of x is equals to since two times of differentiation of this so this is six times of two by l cube di minus dj that's one by l square theta i minus theta j x plus this is differentiating two times so it will become x to the power of one and uh, two into x and then uh, if i differentiate again it becomes two so this is two minus three l square di minus dj plus one by l two theta i minus theta j now if i take this expression and i try to differentiate it one more time then i will end up with
okay so since we have got this what we will do is we will try to do we will try to get um, kind of F1 or the share force so for that what we will write it is F1 is nothing but so anyway before that this was the last time confusion also so for that I need to explain little bit so sign conventions so so if you have a beam sagging moments are positive that means hogging moments are negative okay so that is good similarly similarly for the shear this is for the bending moment this is for the bending moment for the shear force a shear in which sharing takes place in this manner is called positive shear or you can simply see this one as the shear forces that cause clockwise movements can be called as the positive shear that means the negative shear would be okay now let me draw the node or the element again so in the element when I have chosen so my degrees of freedom were F1 M1 and this is F2 and this is M2. So looking at it and the sign convention, my F1 is nothing but shear force evaluated at x is equals to 0. Now my bending moment at M1 is nothing but it is with a negative sign. So minus M at x is equals to 0 so f2 is equals to my shear force at x is equals to l and it has to be positive it has to be in the reverse direction and my m2 is m as x is equals to l so it's the this is the definition that's the reason last time there was some certain sign convention sign confusion has happened so that's the reason i decided to kind of show this thing this time so that it may get you some clarity and i would be happy to take some questions if you kind of still lost at this convention but I think this picture should tell you that now when I tap for my values of V of X and M of things in this manner correspondingly my things will be appearing so now 
let us we are coming to the to the, the purpose of presenting this section the purpose of presenting this section is to get the physical interpretation of the stiffness matrix so when we derive the same thing as a physical interpretation for the uh, bar what we done is we tweaked one degree of freedom keeping all others zero and then measured the equilibrium forces now for this the equilibrium forces that can be put are nothing but f1 m1 f2 and m2 so let us get the combination of f1 m1 f2 m2 when only d1 is non zero and uh, when d1 is non zero and all other things are zero so that means when i put at x is equals to 0 anyway it is unchanged so only when this is d1 so for for practical purposes we can write this one as d1 this as d2 d3 this is d2 this is d4 d1 d3 these things are d2 d4 d1 d3 d2 d4 so when i substitute the coefficient i left with is 6 into 2 12 by l cube okay this case so I have EI also here so EI so then I can write this one as EI by L cube the 12 is the only thing that is remaining now the same thing F2 when I evaluate it at L but with a negative sign so that with a negative sign is the same thing it is independent of X so even at 0 and L it is the same so X dependence is not there and only D1 is present all other things are 0 it's still the positive sign convention comes with the minus V here so this guy is minus 12 similarly I take M and substitute X is equals to 0 with the negative sign so when I substitute x is equal to 0 this entire term gets knocked off and this only term remains and only d1 is present all others are 0 so I get minus 6 L square EI so yeah, I have to also write EI here I'm sorry about it I forgot about that EI here is also there okay I made a small mistake here I should have written um, I kind of just tend to forget writing these 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 things so um, the, the, I have EI here but I just somehow I missed while writing the, the stuff so, so let me just okay so this gives minus 6l and 6l square ei and then i have a minus sign here so that will bring me plex 6l now i evaluate the same thing at x is equals to l so when i take it at x is equals to l then i have 
this term which is coming as coming from 6 into 2 by L cube this thing and this is 12 and this is minus 6 use me pause to 6 so let me just check it and it x is equal to d1 2 into 6 so this will also give me pos to 6 l So these are the forces that are required when only d1 is non-zero. Other that is that is di is non-zero, and all other theta and theta i is equals to zero, dj equals to zero, theta j equals to zero. Similarly, I can write another set where what are the f1 m1 f2 m2 when only d2 is not equals to 0 in that case it is again ei by l cube one can show that L 4L square minus 6L and uh, my minus 6L 4L square 2L square so let us just verify it. I've just written it, but you can verify it. So let's give only D2, just D2 non-zero and give D1, D3, D4 all zeros. Then you can see that here, this is six EI by L square and At x is equal to zero. This is this is vanishing. So this is so. First thing is uh, with respect to the shear force. The shear force will be this one six by l square. So this is the first contribution happening here. The second contribution is coming from the moment at x is equal to zero. That means this term is gone entirely. Only this term is there. And what I need to do is. I have to keep only d2 which is non-zero and other things are zero so this is minus 2 here there is another 2 here this makes it minus 4 ei by l square but the definition of m1 has another minus there that makes it positive 4 el square so that is how i'll get this, this term similarly one can show that at l it will be minus 6L to L square. You can go ahead and verify yourself if this equation is behaving as what I have claimed. So that means we got a physical interpretation well here that the equilibrium forces that are required to sustain the given degree of freedom by a quantity D and keeping all other degrees of freedom zero is the column vector of the corresponding K matrix. So, which is the same definition which we have used in deriving the shape functions of the bar element as well, including the two dimensional truss element. So, I mean, two dimensional bar element. So, now since we got a physical interpretation, let me write 
the full form of k the full form of k would be I'll take this first column and keep it here as it is which would be then the second column which we derived by keeping d2 non zero and all other things zero is similarly by keeping the uh, you can just see that the others can be easily derived uh, the only difference is in this di and dj appear in this set of equation with a minus signs similarly theta i and theta j okay so that is an easiest way one can see so when i'm writing i just rewrite this thing with a the negative sign at least di comes with a negative of the other things so i can quickly write it in this manner plus 12 and 6l for thetas it is not uh, clearly we can write it in that manner because there is one kind of a two theta i coming up here and then theta j so better you try to derive it in the the fashion that has been given to you but one can show that that would also follow in the similar lines which should be 6l 2l square 6l and 4l square so again we can see that this is corresponding to only d1 not equals to 0 this is corresponding to d2 not equals to 0 that means the statement is only d1 not equals to 0 only d2 not equals to 0 only d3 not equals to 0 only d4 not equals to 0 is this column vectors this is the k matrix for a beam element If you look at the problem, those things are as follows. You can see clearly a symmetry. So, K matrix is symmetric this is the properties and well you don't know about uh, the second and fourth column but you can clearly see that the first and the third column are linear combinations of each other that means uh, you each can be produced okay I think I have just um, so let me just see it's a 6L 12 uh, so so anyway this this K matrix is also singular you cannot um, they are linear combinations of each other so that's the reason so so actually this is minus i i forgot to write it as since we see that uh, this, this just appears as okay you go ahead and just check yourself so di and dj appears with only a negative sign to each other so they should self repeat itself only by a negative sign that's the reason they are linear combinations so so the first property is this the second property the second property is like um, since 
column 1 and column 3 are linearly k matrix is singular so that means you cannot invert k matrix as it is so as we seen even in the cases of uh, beam the element stiffness matrix what we have developed will never be invertible because it will undergo corresponding rigid body deformations in our case our k matrix has to be constrained to arrest or constrained to have uh, in, in our case our k matrix our element should be constrained so that rigid body translation and rigid body uh, motions are uh, rotations are avoided so unless you give corresponding boundary conditions to avoid such things our k matrix doesn't become non singular that you can use it to solve your uh, linear system of algebraic equations to obtain the unknown degrees of freedom so this is not different from what we have learned in the previous uh, derivations of the k properties for the bar so it remains as it is same so with this we can clearly write our set of equations as so since we know that the total force is nothing but force vector coming from only d1 not equals to 0 similarly force coming from d2 only d2 not to 0 force coming from only d3 not equals to 0 plus force coming from only d4 not equals to 0 right so then we can clearly write this one as this has the total force so I will write this total force as f1 m1 or yeah I can write f1 m1 f2 m2 so this can be written as a column vector with f1 plus where d1 not equals to 0 into d1 plus f2 where d2 not equals to 0 d2 plus f3 d3 not equals to d3 plus f4 d4 not equals to 0 d4 so I can rewrite this again as a column vectors with f1 f3 f4 d1 d3 d4 right so in this case as k matrix times d matrix is equals to F matrix so in that manner we can show that EI by LQ 12 6L minus 12 mine sorry 6L 4L square minus 6L 2L square 
12 6l 4l square symmetric into di theta i dj theta j is equals to fi mi fj mj so this is the element formulation for the 1d beam element so with this as we derived using the physical interpretation we can as well as get the same thing through the alternate methods so let us also get our stiffness matrix from uh, the principle of virtual work or from the weak form where we have left it in the previous case so in the previous case we have left our weak form here at this place so let us see that can we somehow get the same thing from the from this weak form then our formulation I mean irrespective of how you derive should be it should be the same so let's try to get it from that weak form so for that what we do is let us again take the weak form as it is So in this section what we go is we go back to the weak form where we started So we take this weak form and using this weak form let's assume our y tilde as A not plus A two x square plus A three x cube. So further, I can write this y tilde as one x x square x cube. Times a not a one a two a three. Now I can rewrite this guy as y y tilde at x is equals to zero dy tilde dx at x is equals to zero again with a negative sign why because of the sign convention which I have shown here so this is the positive y but I have considered my theta one in this direction so the positive convention says that it has to be opposite sign so that's the reason I put it in that and minus y tilde x is equals to l dy tilde dx x 
equals to L is my if I want to evaluate it then I need to put this one as evaluate this at a zero that is one zero 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 and I differentiate this then I will get zero one zero zero one two x three x square so when I try to evaluate at zero it will be zero one zero zero then evaluate this at l I'll get one l l square l cube sorry with a minus sign here and uh, and uh, this is also with a minus sign because I have at this this thing and at x is equal to l would be 0 l 2 l 3 l square into a naught a1 a2 a3 but this I can call this one as d i theta i d j theta j so uh, my d matrix which is but this is equals to I call this as capital A matrix times small a vector matrix okay but I want to write this y tilde as n i t i but that is equals to n times d so let me call it as equation one this as equation two uh, or this is as 2a whichever is possible now using one and 2a so and let me call this one as 1a 1a is nothing but x times a so let me rewrite x times a is equals to y tilde so for brevity I'll write it again here so y tilde is equals to x times a and d matrix is equals to a times a and my if I want to invert this matrix I would write a is equals to a inverse of d so I take this expression and keep it in here then I can write y tilde is equals to x times a inverse times d but if I compare it with the second equation or the first equation it says that it is same as n times t this is also equals to n times d so that means my n shape functions are nothing but x a inverse where x for this case is 1 x x square x cube
so if people want to derive your shape functions you can go back use this capital A matrix invert it and multiply with your basis function the basis in this case is, is 1 x x square and x cube and then what you will end up is nothing but your shape function matrix the shape function matrix which anyway we have derived previously is the I would say that since we had the same basis when I'm deriving the 2d node elements so I say that I will get the same shape functions even in that case so the shape functions remains as it is as these things so now from further since, since I know these things I, I can write my exp approximation y tilde as n i d i okay similarly since my virtual displacement v of x should behave same as y tilde I would say that it would also take v as n i and d dash i where d dash is nothing but v1 dv1 by 2 and db2 by where or let me put it in other way so v at x is equals to 0 dv by dx at x is equals to 0 x v at x is equals to l and so that we will d3 dash d4 dash so if you see that the interpolation for the actual displacement approximation and the virtual displacement approximations are same both the approximations follow same interpolation because they have similar characteristics or we tend to choose it in that manner so because of that what we'll do is we take this approximation and we go ahead and put it back in the this equation okay so before doing that I can write now my dy by dx as or dy tilde by dx as d by dx d similarly d square y by dx2 tilde is d square by dx2 applied over all the entries of the n vector times d since these d's are arbitrary constants they are not differentiable okay so they are anyway constants they are arbitrary constant similarly i can also show that dv by 
dx is equals to d by dx of n times d dash or alternatively we can even write it as d dash transpose of n transpose d by dx and there can be written as d dash d by dx2 times n transpose so since we have this we take this these things and take it back and try to substitute in this equation so where we have entries we have one entry at this place we have another entry at this place we have another entry at this place we have another entry at this place we have anyway this this has been mentioned so i don't have to worry about the red circles and we have one entry at this place so we are all set to know because now we know the shape functions so and its shape function derivatives So I'll take that thing again and if I substitute I can write this one as integral 0 to L d dash transpose times d square by dx n transpose ei d by dx2 n into d dx minus d dash transpose d by dx and transpose ei d square y by dx square I will just retain it as it is because I have certain use for it at a later point of time so I will not tweak this guy because these are the boundary values so I, I will tend to kind of not to disturb it as it and make it remain as it is plus and transpose sorry d transpose d dash transpose and transpose ei d cube y by dx cube 0 to l plus 0 to L d dash transpose and transpose w of x dx is equals to 0 now if I look at it I have a potential potential pi in which I can take d dash transpose common 
times integral of 0 to L d square by dx square and transpose ei d square n by dx square d dx again I can take d dash outside d dash transpose from this term d dash transpose from this term d dash transpose from there so I can write it as d n transpose dx ei d2 y by dx2 dx cube 0 to L plus big double bracket closed these two are the same so now we know that mentioned that these boundary terms only exist for natural boundary conditions that is if I mention point forces point or point transfers forces or bending or moments those are the terms that is coming from this one is the bending moment other is the shear force or the point transverse forces that are giving me the contribution and if you look at this term this guy is contributing forces from or we should call it as generalized forces generalized forces from um, from the coming from the body forces are distributed loadings which is one category now then I have one peculiar term which is this part of it so let me just switch this dx little bit so let me rewrite it in this manner since d is arbitrary constant I can take it outside of the integral so let me rewrite it as um, dx here and then d outside then I can close the box from here so this integral which we call it as k matrix okay so then we can clearly show that pi this potential pi is nothing but d dash transpose times k times d minus f coming from the point forces or boundary terms and so and yeah distributed so
is equal this is your potential so we are seeking for the equilibrium with choice of d dash virtual disk degree of freedom such that d pi by d d dash is equals to zero that implies the thing that is in the bracket will just remain and all other things are zero so k times d minus f point minus f distributed equals to zero this is the equilibrium conditions so which i combine these things and i will write it as total f then i can write k times d is equals to f and where k is defined as integral of 0 to l d square by dx square n transpose ei d by dx2 n dx so if you try to since we have already derived the shape functions for one corresponding basis which is like 1 x x square and x cube you substitute corresponding shape functions which you got from the inversion substitute in this the final form of stiffness matrix what you get here for the k matrix is same as same as ei by l cube 12 6l minus 12 6L 4L square minus 6L 2L square 12 minus 6L 4L square symmetric would be the same thing. I am not doing the differentiation but given this shape functions if one's carried out the so anyway maybe in the next class i will if you want me to elaborate i will try to elaborate the how i got the shape functions from this and uh, the once i got the shape functions which are similar to these things then what i will do i differentiate them twice and correspondingly i use it in defining my equilibrium conditions so this is how from the weak form we derive our shape function uh, our element stiffness matrix as we discussed earlier it is the same um, stiffness matrix either we obtain through physical significance or through the uh, so called uh, uh, from the weak form with the substitution of the approximation so this is the element uh, stiffness matrix for the basis of 1x x square x cube would be the same at this point i would stop and i will take few questions